In this episode of Hot Hardware's Two and a Half Geeks, the curious case of the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, and a bunch of other cool stuff we have on the bench. Next. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, dogs and cats, whatever you are. <laughs> nice to see you again. Dave Altavilla here. And uh, as always, uh, on the 2.5 Geeks live stream with my buddy, Marco. How you doing, man? What's going on, brother? I'm doing okay today. Good, good. You are still under the gun with lots of work. But Chris is here to help us uh, look a lot smoother than I looked last stream. Right, Chris? I mean, that's the goal, but we'll see how the execution goes. <laughs> it's all about the execution. No question about that. Hey, great live stream. Uh, was it a couple of live streams ago? Because I think we skipped last week, right, Marco? Yeah, yeah. Yep, two weeks ago. Um, yeah, we had uh, Tom Tap Peterson on. Great guy, super nice guy, smart guy uh, from Intel's graphics uh, group, Intel Graphics, and uh, talking Arc and uh, Arc Mobile primarily, but teasing some Arc desktop. Uh, some folks thought we actually... Uh, he actually leaked the card, but but that didn't happen, right, Marco? Uh, we don't know. You know, I found particularly amusing were sites that snapped screenshots of our live stream and mentioned us, but didn't link out. It's just such a great feeling when colleagues do stuff like that, isn't it? Yes, yes. <laughs> we we you know we we do um, you know when we when we reference other sites work, and let's face it, we're all. <laughs> We're all in this business together. We're we're kind of um, I don't I don't want to say frenemies. I don't even think that's it. We're all colleagues, and yes, we always remember to link out. You got to link out somewhere, uh, but wait, whatever you know, whatever works for you. Um, but yeah, that was an interesting live stream for sure. Tom's a great guy, very gracious, and he was teasing the, the PCB card edge of something before the end of the stream, but we're not sure what, what it even, it could have been like a, uh, you know, a voodoo three card for all we know, you know, it wasn't so, voodoo three. No, it wasn't, it wasn't I, an I, AGP. Slot, I'm sure yeah. it wasn't a voodoo three card. <laughs> right. Right. It was a PCI express card edge of some sort, not AGP. Yeah. Anyways. All right. Well, lots going on. Uh, Hey, I'm, I'm wearing short sleeves, dude. It was like 70 here today. It's yeah. just not it, like, it's nice here today too. Um, my pajama bottoms are nice and cool, but the top is is, is long sleeve. <laughs> Not quite get, there here yet. Maybe another week or two. You get the uh, you get the Fred Flintstone uh, pebbles and Bam Bam pajama bottoms on there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like the neighborhood crazy guy that walks the dog in my pajamas, goes to the store in my slippers. I I don't care. <laughs> great, great. That's a that's a visual I I care to pass on currently. You but, like uh, <laughs> it. You like it. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. It's uh, it's nice. There are benefits to global warming because it's um, you know beautiful out here today, sunny and and uh, pushing seventy up here in the Boston area, which in April is a rarity. So, Chris, hopefully, coming to a zip code near you in Maine shortly. You know. Mm -hmm. But uh, boy, do we have a ton of stuff on on the test bench and uh you know we've been firing away from reviews to news there's all kinds of stuff we're going to get to the processor that's been infinitely leaked and or you know disclosed you know from various channels we don't know how multiple times over amd's ryzen 7 uh, 5700x 3d with its 3d v cache we'll talk about that in a little bit but let's talk about some of the happenings uh, on some some interesting and exciting products at Hot Hardware that we've been looking at lately, uh, both on the desktop and mobile. Uh, Marco, you checked out AMD's Ryzen 7 5700X and Ryzen 5 4500 and 5500 and 5600 series. So a trio of mainstream uh, cost effective chips there. And... Um, found some value in there and um a couple of question marks maybe too right yeah so um amd updated the lineup last week or at least they they announced them a, a while back but they were released last week and yeah they basically um added a whole bunch of chips from a hundred dollars on up to 154 dollars in the ryzen 4000 series so they're these are new zen 2 chips 
and a whole bunch of new Zen 3 chips uh, topping out at the 5700X for $299. Um, and the 5700X is a six core part like the, I'm sorry, it's an eight core 16 thread part like the 5800X um, and is obviously slots in a notch above the 5600X. But there's also a 5600 non-X that slots in right below that and a 5500 just below that. So the branding kind of gives everything away. They they kind of performed exactly where the branding suggests. 5700X slotted in right behind the 5800X and so on and so forth as you go down the stack. What's more interesting, though, is the pricing. Um, 5700X at 299 a few months ago, it would, it would have been like, great, jump all over that, you know, get an eight core part under 300 bucks that you can easily overclock. But if you look at the benchmarks and you compare it to something like a Core i5 uh, 12600K or, or some processors that I unfortunately didn't have to test, like the, some of the Core i3s or, or more mainstream Core i5s, it, the performance doesn't look quite as strong. So the value prop is not quite what it would have been before Alder Lake, but still, you know, a more affordable eight core Ryzen for a socket AM4 owners. Hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see it there. So 12600K drops in at what price point? Uh, let me double check. I want to say it was it was 284 bucks last time I checked. I will double check again. Wow, right that's now. that's actually man, Intel is aggressive when they have competition, huh? <laughs> so 278. That's what yeah, I see. Yeah, 278 right now. And that's K version. If you don't get the K version, if you go for like a twelve four hundred, it's like two hundred bucks, a little over two hundred bucks. Mm. Um, or the KF without graphics two sixty nine, which performs the same as the K. So you know, for multi threaded stuff, I, I, you know, for almost everything, the twelve six hundred K is faster for less money. But it requires you to invest in a totally new platform. You know, for the best performance, you need DDR5 memory, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there's there's reasoning behind that 299 price point for 5700K, but it's not a slam dunk like it could have been. Yeah, it sounds to me like this is a, um, you know, a, a fill in the stack, um, you know, uh, interim, you know, before we get to, to Zen 4 and the new socket. Um, that uh, allows folks, you know, it creates a little bit more value for folks that are already on AM4. Is that about fair assessment? Yeah, you know, flesh out the stack, get rid of. Um, I'm, I'm sure they would all yield to higher clocks, but um, it's probably some um, some yield recovery there, and you have a more extensive lineup to, you know, compare to Intel. It's just really to help AMD kind of across the board with OEMs and with consumers that are trying to eke, you know, every dollar out of their systems. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Check that out. Check out that review uh, at hotharbor.com. I'm going to drop a link in the chat right now. I dropped the link to the um, 12600K, which, again, is a good value right now, just if you compare CPU to CPU. But as you uh, deftly pointed mm -hmm. out, Marco, um, you're talking about needing a motherboard and RAM, uh, a new motherboard and RAM um, to go to Intel's platform. So you've got a... a bit of upside cost there depending on where you're coming from chris yep. would you if you were building a system these days would you would you opt for for all the lake what, what, what do you I'm, think I, so i mean total system cost is definitely what you've got to look at with that um so as you're adding the ddr5 as a requirement in there and things like that it does add up quickly um i mean i think for pure gaming workloads any of these processors should do wonderfully well um, I don't think I've pulled through the the gaming benchmarks on here yet. Um, you know, at lower resolutions where you're getting the more of the CPU bottleneck, you might notice some difference. But if you're playing at 4K and up, it's usually not an issue. Um, and just to, to pop these here, I mean, we're seeing, you know, all across yeah. the family, very similar results. You know, you're seeing some, you know, the 3D mark score overall drop down, but the graphics score in yellow on here, very consistent, um, you know. You're seeing a bit more breakaway here with F1, which is a, a more CPU heavy game, but not all games are going to be that way. So, you know, if I can save substantial cash with the 5700X, that's probably where I'm going to go on the on the total system, especially if I'm already on AM4. It's just kind of a no brainer there. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. the one thing that the 45 Ryzen 5 4500 is Zen 2. You can see how Zen 3 is a much mm -hmm. stronger gamer, especially in that test right there. Yeah, wow. yeah, look at that. yeah yeah interesting interesting 
Good stuff. Hey, by the way, Chris, what are you imbibing today? I have a little uh, Lord Hobo lazy boom sauce. No, hazy boom sauce. Hazy and lazy. Yeah, I'm <laughs> imbibing sauce. on some vibes. Vibes. So, yeah. Marsh Island Brewing uh, right here where the university is. Uh, yeah. So very good. Uh, more on the, I guess, the, the fruitier side of the IPAs. Uh, mm -hmm. but very, very tasty. Yes, Lord Hobo, Lord Hobo Brewing Company right here from New England. I'm trying to think where they're located, uh, but it's a New England IPA, and I'm uh, blanking. I want to say they're uh, out in uh, my neck of the woods, almost Worcester area. But uh, uh, anyways, mm -hmm. forgive me. Forgive me, New Englanders, if I if I didn't pull that off, off the top of my head. Anyways, good beer. We like to talk beer once in a while when we don't have special guests here and have to say stay super sharp, <laughs> right? Right. All right, so let's let's keep moving. Let's uh, let's uh, dig in. Check out that review at Hot Hardware if you want to pour over some more numbers. Uh, any questions uh, here from the chat? Looks like PCI three still Just comments. bandwidth. Yeah, yeah comments. Nothing crazy. Yeah. yeah, gotcha. Okay, fire your questions in the chat uh, as well, folks. Uh, we're happy to answer them. Uh, should they be reasonable and, and not get us in trouble on NDAs and stuff like that? Uh, <laughs> but let's uh, let's drop another one in the chat here. Here's a link to the Asus ROG Zephyrus M16. Uh, I, I dubbed it 12th Gen Power with RTX Punch. And uh, that is a, a new laptop from Asus. You can see it right there. 16-inch beauty. It's... Um, uh, understated, I would say, you know, sort of matte uh, black finish here with uh, rubberized coating, um, but just 4.4 pounds, 4.41 to be exact, with a, um, let's see, a, a 14 core, do I have that? Yeah, uh, Alder Lake, six, six P cores, eight E cores, 20 thread, Alder Lake, Core i9-12900H CPU on board. And um, <clears throat> that is uh, not the uh, the HK, but the standard H. And it is uh, it is locked. So, you know, you have some, con you know, uh, constraints there um, just because it's a non case skew part. But otherwise, decked out machine, 16 inch WXGA. So 2560 by 1600 IPS display. Super gorgeous. Um, punchy display, 500 nits brightness, 165 hertz refresh, three millisecond response time. Um, you know, probably the the highlight of this laptop would be the display. Um, nice thin bezels, GeForce RTX uh, 3070 Ti under the hood uh, with Alder Lake, and a potent gaming machine. Puts up nice benchmarks. Um, we had 32 gigs of DDR5 4800 megahertz memory on board. Um, I want to say as tested, it was 2,500 bucks. Ben Funk did the full write-up. I did the video review. We'll drop a link in the description for later. Um, so you can check out the, the video review on YouTube or, or uh, Ben's written review. But really a lot of muscle for the dollar and a lot of uh, muscle per pound of laptop here, gaming laptop here. As you can see, you know, nothing too fancy, but I, I like the the design. It, it, big, huge mm -hmm. trackpad and very understated. Lots of ports. You know, you get yeah. a full-size gig Ethernet port here. Yep. And, um, yeah, good stuff from the folks at Asus. We ranked it high. We gave it a recommended. Um, let's see. A couple of caveats. 1080p HD camera would have been welcomed in this day and age. Only a 720p camera on board. And I'm trying to think what else. The sound system is stellar on it as well. Asus is really doing a great job with uh, the sound system. Um, onboard uh, memory is uh, half soldered to the board, and then you do get a single SODIMM slot. Um, so, you know, a little bit limited there, but not bad. You do get the ability to expand RAM, and you do get a pair of M2 slots, as Chris is highlighting there. Uh, one of them was populated in our rig, but you can run RAID if you want. Um, gets a little noisy in turbo mode, which is the top spec for the machine to, to push the power envelope and the CPU and the GPU. Um, and, and that will give you kind of the full 100, I think it's 120 watt TGP on the 3070 Ti. Um, so you'll want that, but that for, you know, low 40 dB there you see in standard performance mode. That's not bad. You kick it up to turbo mode, 
and it goes to to yeah high 50s and that's that's starting to make a racket to to get all the performance out of the machine but the nice thing is you do have the ability to dial that in asus provides some good software with it uh doesn't get hot you know that's a very reasonable temp there 108 mm -hmm. f um really well built machine you know um you know solid stuff from the folks at asus any thoughts there gentlemen no, I'm on the same page with you. I, I like this machine. I don't like big, gaudy, garish machines. Mm -hmm. um, and if you want a gaming notebook that, you know, if you can take elsewhere and not draw weird stairs, yeah, that's that's a that's a really beautiful machine. And performance for you know a sub twenty millimeter notebook with that kind of horsepower was really good. We we have a bunch of comments. I'm just going to pop up on the screen quick. Um, yeah. Yeah, we have, um, I'm probably going to pronounce it, Hardly Worgen 71 would love to see a review test for thermal throttling in a 95F environment. Um, I could save you the trouble. And even without 95F, you run something, uh, these notebooks long enough, they all throttle. Um, right. So, yeah, that's going to happen. The and question is how much, I think, is what he's getting yeah, at, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You no, know, yeah. we've, got a, we've got Blues Bruce um, ready to give us some crazy comments uh, if he wants to keep us busy in the chat. Mm -hmm. And Steve's <laughs> from, uh, from uh, YouTube. You know, this is a good point. You were mentioning case cues and the notebooks being locked, and it's it's he's saying it's effectively useless to have it unlocked in these thin notebooks because they're going to throttle anyway if you try to overclock. And you know that's that's true. You need a big beefy notebook if you want to really exploit overclocking, uh, overclocking there. And I all I think Blues Brews might have picked up on your locale with this comment. <laughs> <laughs> Wicked friggin' awesome ports. Yeah, man. <laughs> So I will highlight uh, also saying that he's collaborating with a local brewer on a couple of coffee beers. You know, we have floated the idea of getting a beer sponsor before. Uh, you know, if you're out there, folks, Lord Hobo, Treehouse, uh, Trillium, any of you guys out in New England, <laughs> uh, if you want to sponsor us with beer, we'll take it and we'll feature your can prominently. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Especially uh, if it's delicious. I like <laughs> featuring cans. <laughs> <laughs> You're bad. There goes our sponsorship deal. No. Yeah, thanks, Marco. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what you get. Uh, so yeah, no good stuff from the folks at ASUS. Um, I'm trying to think. There was another. There was something else that was sort of nagging at me about the 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 non case cube downside. What can you manipulate differently that I'm maybe thinking you you might take advantage of, and not necessarily straight up uh, overclocking, Marco. I don't think anything. I'm, it's just nah. the, just the un unlocked multipliers. Okay. Unless I'm forgetting something. I'm forgetting something too. Yeah. Right. Well, anyways, I thought there were maybe I mean, was it Ram? Nah. You know, I, we'll we'll leave it for now. We'll have to come back. There was something else that sort of tickled me on that, but um, and decent battery life for this machine as well. By the way, I think we pulled uh, almost five hours out of it doing just the. Uh, video loop test so when you're not gaming you know when you're gaming you're gonna not have a lot of uptime that's just the way it is um so anyways good stuff there from the folks at asus check that out you got the link in the chat and uh but that should be uh, under voltage yeah under volt i was thinking that you can't play with voltages you might want to cool things down a little bit um change things a little bit yep that's a very good point steez you are correct <laughs> sir or ma'am i think I, I would think you're sir maybe i don't know <laughs> doesn't matter but it doesn't matter right <clears throat> so let's uh let's move on uh, let's talk about another notebook i uh, drop another one in the chat here uh actually yeah so this is what i have on deck right now i've been doing a lot of notebooks lately uh this is samsung's galaxy book 2 pro uh 360 i have the 360 and this is it right here yeah, a little bit of a reflective screen, a little glossy, but this is a 16-inch uh, Alder Lake-powered machine, Core i7-1260P. That is a 12-core CPU, so four, four P cores, uh, eight uh, E cores on board, and 16 threads. And um, as you can see, this thing is wafer thin, so that's an 11.9-millimeter mm. Z-height, 11.9 it weighs three point, uh, I think it's a one, 3.1 pounds, something like that, not even three and a quarter pounds. And that display, which totally this, you know, picture does not do it justice at all. That display, try not to get glare on it, is a 16 inch super AMOLED display that is just gorgeous. It's HDR 500, 
500, 500 nits of brightness? No, 370 nits of brightness on this one, uh, the 360. I think the, the Books 2 Pro standard, the non-360 goes to like 400 nits brightness. But talk about inky saturation, contrast, and pop. Um, check out the full numpad on the keyboard too, right? Oh, very yeah. nice. Yeah, full numpad, huge trackpad as well. Backlit keyboard, of course. 360-degree swing hinges. I don't know that you'd use this in tablet mode, frankly. It's a little unwieldy, a 16-inch tablet, but hey, whatever works for you. It does come with a pen as well. Uh, I want to say it's like 1550 bucks as I'm testing it right now. Uh, review is coming mm -hmm. maybe Friday if we're lucky. Uh, one terabyte uh, PCI Express 3 SSD. Wish we had a PCI Express 4 SSD, but that may have been for power. Um, 16 gigs of RAM for like mid $1,500 config and that <clears throat> alder lake p skew does pretty well uh to to be uh, shown on that uh, tbd we're gonna we're gonna disclose all that have to check out battery life uh 68 watt hour battery in this machine i'm expecting it to do fairly well depends on how efficient samsung dialed that oled display as well um but very interesting option in the market and as always I don't know, Marco, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe I'm being a little bit too positive on Samsung, but just gorgeous industrial design. They really kind of nail it, especially with the display technology because they own it, you know? Yeah, really no, it does, it does look like a nice machine. That's a little larger form factor than, than I would use. Yeah. But I mean, if, to be so thin and light with that much horsepower, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, we have a comment from Ben saying, you know, oh, Intel Arc, this version is the one without Arc, right, Dave? Yes, it is. Unfortunately, we do not have an ARC uh, enabled machine yet. We're told there are a couple months away from the States. <clears throat> I have seen them show up out in Asia somehow. Um, but our, our US contacts for Samsung, the agency that we work with, doesn't have access to ARC enabled machines right now. So this is on Iris XE graphics. Um, and I will tell you, you know, that it's basically performing like Tiger Lake XE graphics, you know, the, the high-end 96 execution unit Tiger Lake. That's what's in it. The, the GPU uh, in Alder Lake is essentially the same. And that's about exactly where it performs from a from a GPU standpoint. So it's not a it's not a gaming machine. It can handle some light duty stuff. It's it's you know no slouch in terms of integrated graphics, but it's it's integrated graphics. Mm -hmm. Yep. <clears throat> um, but I mean, yeah, just a beautiful, beautiful machine. I there is a 13.3 version of this, Marco. This is the the 15, uh, the 16 inch version, excuse me. Um, so, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's pretty sweet. And um, stay tuned for the review coming Friday. Hopefully, if we're lucky, um, you know, Samsung does a lot of things right with this thing. They even, and I'm I'm trying to dig in with the um, with the uh, PR team on this a little bit. Um, they even have an app for dialing the OLED display and they have a HDR button that I don't know, but maybe it's Windows 11 getting it better, but that HDR toggle actually doesn't screw up the colors oh. <laughs> on, on Windows desktop. It actually looks pretty good. And then you flip it on during like, you know, an HDR movie or something like that or a YouTube clip and it looks it's like it's doing it right <laughs> you know it's not just for gaming so it's it's pretty good cool yeah yeah so that's the uh samsung galaxy book pro uh book 2 pro x360 and uh let's toss one more in the chat and i do think this by the way is samsung uh yes it is it's qd oled powered also a samsung powered de de device or system the alienware 34 uh, AW3423DW, don't go with the model number, please. Gaming monitor, oh my, QD OLED. Uh, that thing is gorgeous. 34-inch uh, QD OLED, quantum dot OLED. Mark, I want you to tell us all about that technology, but God, it's beautiful. Yeah, so beautiful. <laughs> so uh, Samsung invented, or at least they're they're in court now. Uh, someone's saying they stole the tech, but... At, at this point in time, Samsung QD, uh, QD OLED invented by Samsung. <laughs> that's, to be that's the panel. That's the panel tech uh, used in this uh, Alienware monitor, and it's absolutely beautiful. So the great thing about OLED is um, the blacks. You know, each individual pixel, it, each pixel is individually lit. So 
blacks are true black. You can have it, you know, a actual Ben tested it where, you know, his colorimeter shows the black level at 0.0. .0 so like real true black, plus you have super brightness and really bright white. So Dell calls it infinite contrast but you know it's it's a one million to one contrast ratio it's, it's just really when you see it in action it's gorgeous plus this particular panel i want to say the refresh rate was 165 hertz so you have nice yeah. a high yeah. enough it's not 4k res it's 14 uh, 3440 by 1440 but just this beautiful high res panel with great viewing angles awesome dynamic range and contrast with super fast pixels and technology built in to mitigate like uh, ghosting and any image retention. He really loved it. There was a couple of minor issues that cropped up during testing, like the firmware needs to be tweaked because the um, the the anti image retention tech kind of flashed in while he was playing games, and it's not supposed to do that. Obviously, it's supposed to kind of wait for idle times or for long periods of idle activity before it tries to shift pixels. So they're working on that, and I forget the second thing. Um, that ben kind of nitpicked on but overall the, just gorgeous monitor oh the it was stand, the stand yeah the stand takes yeah. a little bit of um real estate on the desk and uh 175 hertz refresh rate is that yep. right yeah okay with the g-sync <clears throat> range all the way from okay. one to 175 hertz yeah oh, no, i remember the, 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 the other big issue was because it's g-sync ultimate and it has to use one of nvidia's g-sync ultimate boards uh no hdmi 2.1 at this point it's only hdmi 2 so right. if you want to use it on a console there's some jump hoops you have to jump through to take advantage of the higher res or the higher refresh rate i should say or you have to kind of tweak some settings to kind of balance it out, but you can't just plug in HDMI 2.1 and gain all the benefits of uh, dynamic refresh and the extra capabilities of the display. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the other uh, drawback, of course, as you might expect, is Blues Brews. Um, by the way, I don't know, Blues Brews, can you hook us up with beer with that brews in your name? Anyways. He's um, saying it's coffee brews. He's the coffee <laughs> part of that coffee. Uh, oh, gotcha. Oh, coffee gotcha, porter, gotcha, coffee gotcha. stout. Um, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Which well, anyways, I wouldn't say says, no to either. No, no, absolutely not. Coffee and beer together. It's like a magic combination. Hey, um, it says looks beautiful and thirteen hundred dollars woof. Yeah. Um, would have to agree with you. However, <clears throat> it's kind of the going rate for the higher end IPS, big curved IPS displays. In other words, I have an LG 38 inch IPS curved display looking at, at me right here. It's um I forget the name of it, but uh, at any rate, I think that currently right now is retailing around twelve hundred bucks. I think when I bought it, it was closer to fourteen hundred bucks. So when you get into this thirty-four inch plus range curved, either IPS, uh, you get up into that range. The fact that this is QD OLED actually is kind of, I, you know, it's it, to me it makes it actually a competitive price. I know it's not cheap. But it's still competitively priced because monitors in this range, that's that's what they go for. And what's the color bit depth <clears throat> of this panel? Is it 10? I, would, I was just going to mention that. I think it's 8 bit. Um, that, I'm going to look that up because that's important too. Like if you start looking for high uh, quality, so the, the gamut coverage on this panel was nuts, right? In terms of uh, actual tested gamut coverage. And if you start looking for panels that can do, you know, 10 bit. For professional work, true to get up into these, you yeah. know, thousand ish dollar price range for you know 32 inch type monitors. But I have to go look up the specs, I'm not sure. Yeah, mm. true 10 bit panel gets up pretty quick. So, an 8 bit FRS panel, um, is basically it has a true eight bits of color depth, and then for the last two bits to make it a 10 bit panel, it basically rapidly oscillates between two colors, two adjacent colors mm. to get that in between. Um, so usually, you know, I find an 8-bit panel with FRS on top isn't too big a deal. Um, what I don't like is the 6-bit panels with FRS to make them an 8-bit panel. Then you really do notice that flicker sometimes. Um, but, you know, sometimes, you know, with the HDR spec, it should be 10-bit in some way or another, whether that's 8-bit FRS or true 10-bit. Um, it's yeah. not in the spec. I'm looking. just looking through real quick. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking too. We're, we're digging, yeah. digging feverishly. I mean, um, honestly, probably not the biggest concern for most of the target demographic on here. But if you really want to do that, like HDR color, uh, video color grading type work, 
um, you really want that true 10 bit. Well, yeah, it, it is. It's 10 bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I figured it is. Ben, Ben did some tests on this thing and it, you know, 99% sRGB color gamut, 98% DCI P3, the volume on it, 116% of the DCI 3P gamut volume, 164% sRGB. And, you know, I mean, it's just, it puts out crazy color. Yeah, <laughs> yeah even if got, you're getting 144 hertz, 10 bit, as Steve is saying here, like that's yep. still very impressive. I have no place with 144 hertz. Um, <sighs> and then you can toggle between when you're gaming or not, I'm sure. Dell, yeah, just make a 38 inch version of this, please. And I'll make a 32 inch <laughs> flat version for me. <laughs> <laughs> I love the 38 inch curve I have here now. It's perfect size. Any bigger and it gets a little crazy. Your head's swiveling a little too much, but this is kind of perfect. I have. I just would love that OLED, man. Good yeah, stuff. My, my, my 32 inch is just the right size. It's, and I, I don't use the sides enough. So I, a 32 would be perfect for me. 34 yeah. is too much. Yeah, yeah. Everybody I mean, just has to, just their... to look at those blacks on this in the the Tomb Raider load screen. Like, <laughs> just how dark it gets. The camera has trouble with it. Yep. Yeah. Impressive. Yeah. Backlight bleed. No, no such thing. <laughs> I guarantee you, it looks way better than this in real life. But that's just you know the limitations of the camera. Yeah, man. Well, check it out. That's the review at Hot Hardware. I'll drop a uh, link in the chat again here, so you get that. Um, that is the Alienware. 34 inch QD OLED BUT. Uh, really have to hand it to the folks at Alienware. They do a great job. Great looking design, too. Uh, just, you know, that Space Age Legend 2.0 design language that um, Dell, is, Dell and Alienware are known for. Good stuff for sure. We, we liked it a lot. All right. Let's move on to the, uh, the main event because we've been dragging this out for too long. Uh, benchmark leaks all over the place for this thing. So we might as well start with that. But Let's let's back it up a, a notch for folks that might not be familiar. AMD's Ryzen 7 uh, 5800X 50, 3D. Uh, it is uh, the 5800X that we know and love strapped with uh, 3D vCache. And they do this with some fancy technology through silicon via, um, you know, through silicon interconnect is what the, the via is uh, through silicon interconnect, um, you know, stacking cache on top of the chip. And um, that is very useful for mainly gaming applications. We actually had Robert Halleck on a few episodes ago. Robert Halleck from AMD, uh, director of technical marketing, senior director of technical marketing uh, for Ryzen. And, um, you know, he stepped through the technology a little bit. Um, not uh, some some interesting takeaways from that interview. Actually, um, it will not be overclockable. He had, he did um, discuss that. Um, it's it's hard locked, um, and there may be a reason for that. We're not quite sure. Um, we, Mark, I don't know if my brain's forgetting why, but um, yeah. it yeah, was. Like there, he was saying, pushed... Go ahead, Chris. Oh. Uh, well, beyond the thermals, it was already just kind of at its limit with at the its current limit. technology, yeah. and they wanted it to be stable for the first gen. I mean, they said overclocking for AMD in general isn't going anywhere, of course, but for yeah. this particular SKU. Uh, yeah, right. there, there was some clarification after Robert made that statement um, on the podcast that you can overclock fabric and memory yes it's just core <clears throat> cpu cores and voltage that 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 whole frequency and voltage curve for the processor itself is locked and as we know infinity fabric and memory does affect rise in performance fairly you know, notably yeah. um so yeah um interesting technology for sure um and uh robert also confirmed that it um should help gaming um you know well the claims are that you know up to 15 percent faster in gaming workloads and that's kind of about it he didn't expect it would be much use in content creation and other things like that however i'm not so sure i think we might find some other corner cases um <laughs> that might that might uh take advantage of that cash but marco what are your thoughts here there's been a whole bunch of leaks people are getting these things out the back door too it seems um and then let's talk about strategy for this because it's a one-off and it comes at a, at a unique time and a unique opportunity 
for AMD as well. And I think that's part of what we wanted to dig into here um, is the timing and what it means and, and what <laughs> AMD is going for here and, and what's with this, this one-off crazy, almost science project kind of chip. Yeah, so um, we're not talking about any official numbers that no, you know, we're just talking about the leaks that came out. Um, reviews may or may not be coming. We know availability is later in the month. AMD has disclosed that, and yeah, so the fifty eight hundred X three is interesting because it's really laser focused on gaming. All of the messaging has been around gaming and sort of technology leadership saying, "Hey, look what we built!" Right? We we have obviously. AMD have been looking at this many years ago to have the technology built into Zen 3 where you can bolt on this cache. So this was, you know, you know, there was some forward-looking uh, design in the Zen 3 architecture and the current CCXs to allow this tech to be used. But why bring it on the 5800X in particular? It's probably because, as Robert pointed out in our podcast, there is a limit, a limit to what you could do with this first-gen 3DV cache. And it aligns with the 5800X. And you don't want that crazy latency going across multiple CC, uh, you know, compute dies. So stick to a single eight core die, you know, at, that runs at the clocks that are compatible with this 3D V cache with this particular capacity and density that they're using. And let's see what it does. And all of AMD's messaging has been about gaming, saying, you know, this large cache will help with game performance. And the leaks seem to confirm that they're showing some big gains over the standard Ryzen processors in gaming. Um, so, but why do it one off? And I've been thinking about that and it seems like the timing is perfect because Alder Lake came kind of shook things up and you probably have a bunch of gamers on socket AM4 that are like, wow, Alder Lake looks good. Maybe I'm going to switch platforms. But now if you have this semi-affordable chip that AMD is saying is the fastest for gaming and you can just plunk it into your existing socket, that sort of changes the proposition there. So it's going to be interesting to see how the numbers from multiple reviews um, play out when the reviews hit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chris, I don't know if you can bring up that link that I dropped in the chat um, just to, to talk to this a little bit more, but it's, it's interesting on, on how they do it. I think you're right. I think it's um, a brilliant piece of strategy for AMD. Um, maybe that's giving them a little too much credit. Maybe they were kind of reaching for something out of desperation and they pulled this thing that was, uh, you know, intended for the data center. Let's let's face it, Milan X, uh, you know, benefits greatly, certainly from big data analytics and big data sets that need fat caches. Um, and then they said, hey, you know, Intel's come with this thing. Let's uh, let's let's do something creative. I think I think that's it. I think it's I think it's a creative, you know, stroke of of uh, of marketing brilliance to get this out the door to give gamers an option. As you can see there, 1.18 x 1.25, as little as 1.04, depending on the game title, um, and <clears throat> you know, it does. It gives an option in the same socket. Um, did we get a price point on this thing yet, Marco? Did have they disclosed that, or, or is that not? I don't. Disclosed? I don't remember if they did. I'm not going to say it because I'm not sure. Yeah, if they did. my brain is. We, we have to be I, careful. I, yeah, I do want to clarify a point that I just made because uh, you know, Blues Bruce says I'm not sure it's going to convince most Intel bros to switch. I'm not saying it's going to convince Intel people to switch to AMD. I'm saying you have AMD users with existing platforms already that may have been contemplating moving to Alder Lake. But yeah, you know, Zen four is also coming. So if you have a handful of AMD, you know, current AMD owners that are like, hmm, do I upgrade now and grab Alder Lake, which has shown really strong gaming performance, or do I wait for Zen four? So instead of even, you know, letting people contemplate that switch, mm -hmm. you now have the AM4 platform, according to AMD's claims, as their premier gaming platform for you know PC gaming platform. That's going to keep a lot of gamers that may have switched to Alder Lake on AM4 for without right. a, a massive investment. So I think it's a, a really it's a good move in that regard because gamers are finicky, man. If they want more performance, they don't care what platform they're going where the performance is. Right. Yeah. So interest, it's just yeah. interesting discussion. Yeah, totally agreed. You know, the average enthusiast that, um, you know, drops plenty of coin on their rig every year. Um, 
you know, would consider maybe making the switch, springing for that Alder Lake motherboard and, and CPU. This is a cheaper, much cheaper option in that case where you don't have to buy the motherboard. You can stay in the socket you're on for another generation until Zen 4 hits. And then you have the option of, okay, let's look at AM5 versus Alder Lake. Uh, it's a different different equation altogether when we get there, but yeah, it's a it's a good stopgap. Chris, what what are your thoughts? Was that the strategy there? I mean, <clears throat> I I don't see any real reason why they just bring it out just because. Um, and I think <laughs> that strategy does make a lot of sense just to keep people in the socket in the system a little bit longer. Um, you know, it's a very interesting option. It's it's a very compelling tech demo but tech demos themselves don't you know sell it's the greater strategy behind it and you know gamers like to spend money and they like to have the interesting thing so <laughs> yep yep and um you know i think i think you know we all would i would love honestly the option of a 5950x 3d you know a 16 core chip with with a little extra cash on top so that that i had also the best multi-threaded in socket am4 as well as the best gaming in socket am4 um but i think they hit they definitely hitting the sweet spot in terms of the eight core you know that's kind of enough for you know most gamers and so yeah i think it was a good good point product to you know and a good strategy you know interesting stuff i mean uh, you know, whoever's <clears throat> whoever's dialing the uh, the CPU strategy over there, they're they're doing it right. <laughs> you know. So we have another interesting <clears throat> comment um, that opens up a whole nother discussion. And I think this is going to yeah. be some of the discussion post fifty eight hundred X three D reviews, right? So okay. he's like, uh, you know, Hart Hartley Worgen uh, got a fifty nine hundred X because he didn't want to wait and he wanted the flexibility of the extra cores, mm. and like that brings up. The extra, the, another point, right? If the cache isn't going to help you with a particular workload, you may get better performance from more cores, right? If you're running multi-threaded stuff, that's not going to benefit from a huge cache. You're going to get a bigger benefit from more cores. But the other yeah. thing to consider is when you focus solely on gaming, right? To, to showcase the gaming benefit most of the time of a processor, you have to crank down the game details or resolution so mm. that the GPU is not the bottleneck, right? Right. No matter if you're running a game at 4K and your GPU, you know, is just completely tapped out, you can put whatever processor, faster processor you want in there. You're not going to go any faster than the GPU can pump the frames out, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you get? You know, like it's it's this fine balance. Y yes. If you drop the resolution and you know, details to see theoretically what a CPU can crank out and keep the GPU fed, you can show a spread. But once you bottleneck your GPU, that spread is gone. So, right. Yeah, this is the CPU for the 1080p 360 hertz monitor setup. Um, you know, your every frame matters. And if you can get twice as many frames out as your opponent, then you've got an advantage there. Esports, yeah, you know, and it's interesting that the demo when they came out at, uh, I think they announced this 3D V cache at CES. Um, the uh, the demo, uh, you know, benchmark um, graphs that were put up, Dota Seven, Gears Five is one that's a little bit more graphics intensive, mm -hmm. but also CPU sensitive. Monster World Hunter, League of Legends, and Fortnite. None of those are GPU crushers, but they are competitive platform games that benefit from high frame rate you know mm -hmm. so yeah if you're if you're if you're dealing with a gpu crusher engine and as marco noted if you're gpu bound th this probably this extra cash isn't going to help you that much right as we saw on the other benchmarks earlier for the the 5700x you know when you're pushing 4k high detail and all that it just doesn't make much difference what cpu you're on mm. Now, the, the one wrinkle that's a lot harder to test, um, <clears throat> although I wish I thought of this sooner, <laughs> you know, there's um, if you're testing, Can't go like, there. <laughs> if you're like theoretically, if you were testing frame times 
and with like a, a, a multitasking workload, you know, ha when Halleck was on, he basically said it really only helps for gaming on these on mainstream parts. Now, we should clarify this isn't like a gimmick AMD is pulling because this technology is on Milan and in the data center as well. So oh, there's serious. massive workloads. Yeah. If you yeah. need tons of data close to CPU cores, it's going to help. But in a, in a mainstream consumer PC, it's really just gaming where you see these massive leaps in performance from this cache. But, you know, benchmarks are funny. We run benchmarks to, to quantify performance differences between hardware. But it's rare that people run one app in a bubble. So if you're multitasking and having that huge cache may help with some scenarios. And it, maybe it doesn't help your average frame rate. But if it if it helps your low frame rate and, you know, to maintain more consistent frame times, that's an experience upgrade. But that's a lot harder to test and to quantify. But just stuff to consider. Just talking out loud. That's interesting. <laughs> Frame times. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that could make it definitely an experience uh, benefit. So yeah, your average frame rate might might not change much, but your mins and your and your frame time uh, could improve. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> okay. We got to be careful how, how far we dance here. <laughs> <laughs> but that's You're not saying that. Yes, 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 yes. But um, no, it's, it's, it's good stuff. Um, you know, and, and then I also wonder, um, you know, when you talk about context switching and things like that, um, you know, I wonder if, you know, some of the use cases in, in game streaming might benefit. So, uh, you know, I don't know if it's necessarily that, you know, uh, it helps performance overall, but maybe it's responsiveness of the system because the game's freed up you know, a little bit more, the stream is cleaner, that kind of thing. Um, Val Rojas, who, um, you know, will be coming on tomorrow night for us, our, our game streamer on Twitch. She's fantastic. Valer, um, she has trouble all the time with certain games that, you know, she has a, a Ryzen, I think it's a Ryzen 7 5800X in her rig and a RTX 3080. And once in a while, Apex Legends gives her fits because streaming and gaming at the same time is a little bit of a chore. So it'll be interesting to see all the different wrinkles, maybe the corner cases we can find when we can talk about this thing and performance. And yeah, it was a um, an interesting um, kind of brilliant, uh, you know, marketing move, right, from AMD. I'm assuming the numbers hold up, assuming that the, what have, what we've seen in the leaks is true. <clears throat> And and the sales data will will prove that out too. That's the other question: is you know how many of these can mm -hmm. they make, how many of these can they sell? Um, because if it's you know if it's a case where obviously these aren't going to yield as good as an original fifty fifty eight hundred X, right? So um, it, it's a loss leader to a certain extent. You know, maybe you can sell enough to break even on it. You you succeeded in your stopgap measure for Alder Lake. Now Zen Force here, uh, but yeah, what's the business case look like for AMD when this is all said and done and these things are out in the mainstream? That's going to be interesting to look at too. Look at the numbers. Yep. Uh, but good stuff. And I think that kind of wraps us, right, fellas? Yeah, I think we should probably run. We got the, the chats <laughs> kind of died down. We, there's only so much we can say today. <laughs> um, but yeah. today today but yes stick around to hothardware.com where you can find us on the web and marco's burning the midnight oil i'm burning the midnight oil chris is he's he's burning the midnight oil too we actually have chris mm -hmm. strapped down with a bunch of things these days too but um not some so much that's look at those <laughs> laptops behind him bunches of laptops not not so much stuff at hot hardware but different other things stuff. yeah other stuff we do at hot tech um that's our analyst firm but um yeah um find us on the web at hothardware.com twitter.com slash hot hardware youtube.com slash hot hardware vids uh or hot hardware hot hardware is i think where you'll find us best on youtube too thumbs up and subscribe we are going to be coming out with a giveaway again soon marco we need to think about that we need to think about so who we're gonna while we were at. on the cast that oh, yeah? person just wrote us again who has been so generous in the past so we'll hopefully have news soon. Oh, it literally, the email right. just came in. If you hit send receive, it's in your box right now. 
Did he write us about a giveaway? Or did he write us about? No, but you know how you know you know yeah. how it goes with him. Yeah. <laughs> a certain bird of prey. Yes. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> yes. Well, stick around. We could be giving away something fun in the not so distant future. We usually try and give away something almost every month at hotharbor.com, where you can find us on the web. Hit thumbs up, subscribe. Uh, so you can get notified when we go live. We don't always hit Wednesdays at 530. We try to, unless the workload is such that we can't. But we hope to see you in the next one. And thank you so much in the meantime for stopping by.